Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today we're going to do something a little different, and take a look at a gun that us regular folks can actually get our hands on. It's a bit on the interesting side, at least I think so, and it is this. It is a Turkish conversion of a French Berthier rifle, and I think there's a really cool story behind it. So, let's start a little bit before. This guy is a standard French Berthier. It's about 12 feet long. Uh, add another four feet for the spike bayonet if you have it. And this was a standard French issue rifle during World War I. It uses a three round Mannlicher type clip snapped into the gun very conveniently. And this is what a lot of French troops were using during the First World War. Uh, it's an eight millimeter Lebel. It's a nice rifle, uh, reliable, effective, um, really very, very good rifle. The guy we're looking at today, this Turkish rifle, is a little different. These were, these started out life as full-length Berthier rifles that Turkey either captured or bought. Um, there's a little bit of speculation on exactly where they came from. They probably were uh, captured. There was a, there were a couple of armed shipments that went through, uh, through the area that Turkey may have, uh, taken possession of uh, during World War II, actually. So one of, the, one of the natural resources that Turkey had was its uh, Circassian walnut forest. You may have heard of Turkish walnut, excellent wood for gun stocks, among other things. And uh, Turkey was having some issues after World War II with people illegally logging and making off with the lumber. How much of that is uh, justifiable, we don't know. But the Turkish response was to set up a group of forest rangers and they wanted to arm them. But they wanted to arm them with something that wouldn't do you a whole lot of good if you were a brigand and you shot the forest ranger and took his gun. So all of the Turkish military was pretty much standardized on the 8mm Mauser cartridge. They had a lot of Mauser rifles. So they decided to use captured Berthier rifles in 8mm Lebel for their forestry corps. The idea being if some bad guy got a hold of this rifle, it wouldn't do them all that much good because there wasn't any real good source for 8mm Lebel ammo around. So what they did, they took full-length Berthiers, they cut them down uh, to this sort of carbine length. The, the stock started out as a full-size Berthier stock, which you know was about this long, and they cut them down into sort of a, a sporter-looking Mannlicher type stock. They used the nose cap and the front band off of a 1905 Engineer Mauser rifle, actually, and uh, issued them out to the forest rangers. The receiver here is marked 1948, which is the date that these conversions were done, about 10,000 rifles all in 1948. It has a new serial number on the side, so most of these, the original French parts aren't necessarily matching, but when the Turks went through and rebuilt all these guns, they matched up the parts and numbered them, and most of these, as you find them today, are matching, uh, at least from 1948. And then it's stamped T.C. Orman, O-R-M-A-N. So this one is originally marked San Antien, uh, model 1916. There were, there's a whole variety of manufacturers and specific models that the Turks used for these conversions, and, and you'll find a bunch of different ones. Uh, the bolt is slightly bent. Uh, that was done in Turkey. Most of them are a little bent. Some of them are straight. Occasionally, you'll find one that actually has a, a French carbine bolt that has a big 90 degree bend in it and uh, sits down against the receiver. So there's a lot of interesting variety in these rifles that's neat for the collector to see. And uh, frankly, I think they are, they, they, they handle great. They're a real nice, convenient length. And uh, I'm excited to see how this one shoots. So we're on the range. Let's uh, grab some eyes and ears and some ammo and see how it works. All right, so we have a little bit of a conundrum with this rifle. It's chambered in 8mm Lebel, and we have 8mm Lebel ammo. But what we've got here is French surplus, and that ammo is well known for having hang fires and duds. So sometimes it won't fire, sometimes it'll fire a little bit after you pull the trigger, and sometimes it'll work fine. And I really don't know exactly what we're going to get out of this particular batch. So, well, let's take a look and see. That one fired. Hit pretty much where I was aiming, too. Yep, 
here's the cool thing. You can see there's a big opening in the bottom of the receiver. That's for the clip. When I chamber this third round, there's nothing left holding the clip in place, and it'll fall right out the bottom of the gun, like that. This has a pretty substantial kick to it. It's a fairly lightweight rifle. I like it. All right, I want to see what kind of group we can get out of this, if anything. Uh, and I don't really want to do it with the uh, Hangfire Special Surplus. So we have a box of uh, older commercial hunting ammo, and we're going to go ahead and give that a try. Now we're at 50 yards here. I want to make sure that this is actually zeroed. And on top of that, I make no pretense about being the world's greatest shooter. Ooh, that really has a kick when you're prone. Ah! There goes the clip. All right, let's go take a look and see how I did. All right, well, this isn't all that great, but it's not totally terrible. Um, I was shooting at this box from an angle. You can see I have one, two, and three rounds. Well, call that about four inches at 50 yards, eight inches at 100. Um, like I said, I'm not the world's greatest shooter, and this doesn't have the world's greatest bore. But uh, it's accurate enough for a lot of use. It's accurate enough to stop a tree poacher, I bet. All right, just for kicks, I want to see if I can hit anything offhand at 100. So go ahead and use our decent ammo again. Load up my three round clip here. These clips are actually stupidly expensive. They're 20 or 25 bucks to get. And uh, that's because they're pretty rare. The French army considered them expendable, used them once and just threw them away. There are some folks in Australia who uh, actually made the dies to stamp brand new ones, and uh, everything I hear, they're quite good. So if you have one of these three-round berthiers and need a clip, they might be the place to look. I think I pulled that one low. Well, shall we go take a look? All right, well, the secret's out. I made one hit on the box from 100 yards standing, and, and that's it right there. So, yeah, I'm not the world's greatest shot, but I like this little carbine. Uh, for what it's worth, all of this shooting so far has been done with the rear sight set to 400 which is its uh, shortest distance position. So maybe if we set this down on a bench rest, uh, we could find out how much of this inaccuracy is me and how much is the rifle and where it actually is zeroed. But for my purposes, this is, eh, this is not bad. It's a fun rifle to shoot. I don't like doing it prone. It, it really kicks you when you're prone. But uh, standing up, get a good position, a good stock weld on it, and uh, it's not too bad. All right, guys, before we go, there's a little caveat I want to give you, some information about fire shooting uh, 8mm LaBelle ammo and Berthier rifles. Uh, these rifles were initially designed around an early version of the LaBelle cartridge. In 1932, the French uh, came up with a new cartridge called Ball N that was intended for better long-range use with machine guns. It had a heavier bullet and the chamber of a normal rifle was a little too short to effectively use it. You get high pressure, um, didn't work very well. So the French went through and had an extensive modification program and reamed out the chambers on pretty much all of their all of the Berthier rifles. The way you can tell if yours has been modified is by this N on the receiver shank. Uh, in this case the receiver and the barrel. Now 
just as an example, this is three rounds of surplus ball N, and that chambers perfectly easily, no trouble to it at all. My Turkish rifle, my Orman carbine, if you take a look at the receiver on this, there's no N. It hasn't been marked. And I did not know, up until today when we brought this out to shoot it, um, whether this had been converted or not. I kind of assumed the Turks had. Uh, it turns out they have not. So even with a Turkish rifle, if you don't see that N on your receiver, you don't want to be shooting surplus ammo. As you can see, that is extremely difficult to chamber. If I got a hammer and started whamming on the bolt handle, I could probably get it to chamber. But that cartridge is trying to, to chamber into a chamber that's too short, and it really doesn't want to do it. So. We did have a few rounds that were a different vintage that worked without any trouble. Um, whether they were uh, pre-ball N or not, I'm really not sure, but I'm not going to be shooting any more surplus through this guy. Uh, it's not the sort of thing that will probably blow up your rifle, uh, certainly it didn't on this one, but it will be giving you excessive pressure because the chamber is too small um, and you don't want to do it on a regular basis. So. Uh, PSA on 8mm Labelle ammo. Uh, important to know what you're shooting out there, guys. So, you, like I said, you can actually get these rifles still, and they're not that expensive. Uh, I paid, I believe, 225 or 250 bucks for this one. Uh, keep your eyes out on Gunbroker. Um, dealers don't generally have them anymore, but they do show up. And occasionally they're real cheap, because people don't know what they are. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.